I'm online. <laughs> um, may I start where we stopped? Do I get some feedback from you about how the first session was? Wait, wait, wait. Then you have to study more, no? Yeah. See, there is a... Uh, this is a well-established subject. We are using software that's like 25 years old. How we deliver the content to you and how you absorb the content are uh, tactical matters. Okay. Madam is very much interested that you pick up these things. How to fit it into your curriculum is a different matter. Okay. This is an ad hoc kind of lecture. I'm here, so I'm giving it. But um, independently, she will tell you how to make a systematic study of it. And as for me, I'm a goner in this subject. I'm not very well... Uh, I'm not an expert in it, but I do believe that this should be the foundation level for all programming exercises. The, I will say that this functional languages, there are, you can say, several of them. If you search on the internet, it's a hot, so-called hot subject. But long ago, the work has been done by the greats. So they've won their awards and they've gone to the next world. Uh, but the work is there for us to pick up. Uh, so what I want to do is to finish this uh, notational thing that I was doing. That we said divisors of n is one equation, and prime of n is another equation. And then we saw, I've cut and pasted for those who want to follow through later on. Uh, so can we construct? The set of all primes. Mm -hmm. so there's an infinitely many set of primes. Mm -hmm. Now let's do it. Reward S T R two underscore function. That's what it is. Test dash zero computer. Dot go for script. So, prime is a function, divisors is another function. Link 1, yeah, 0 to 10 is you know what. So, what do you think this is? If I did it, the machine is going to crash. Let me crash it. Okay. Uh, Hmm. You did it. Yeah. I didn't even wait to show it to you. But how about uh, we reload, restart the calculator? We'll do a simple construct, the list of all i, such that i belongs to, let's say, 1 to 1,000, 0 to 1,000. It's a problematic thing if you ask if 0 is a prime number. That's enough. Okay? Okay? All those i's between 1 and 1,000, which are prime numbers. That's what the math says. And it's not some <laughs> mind-breaking math. It's so powerful. Uh, there you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, let's just, cons let's see how this is done. Okay. Um, Actually, I don't want to say it. I'll tell you why. There is something called operational reasoning, which is, if you look at operational reasoning on the net, you'll say, uh, how a machine goes around doing, executing its program, loops, all of that stuff. 
avoid operational reasoning like the plague. That is the advice given by the person who put the dot. Do you know the name Dijkstra? Okay, well Dijkstra said avoid operational reasoning as a plague. So what we are doing is, let's call it analytical reasoning. There are other kinds of reasoning called equational reasoning and so on. We don't want to discuss how this structure came about. This has a perfectly straightforward meaning and sure enough it's happening. Okay. Uh, what I want to talk to you about is notation, um, prefix notation, infix notation. We did this, for instance, we said 10, we put this back quote, Oops. clarity. Uh, let's say 10 mod 3, okay. You need a couple out of it. And 10 is. That is the remainder and the quotient. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Now, mod is a prefix operator. To make a prefix operator into an infix operator, we put back quotes around it. Um, infix operator like plus. If I want to make that prefix, I put parentheses around it. And it leads me into trouble immediately, I'll show you. I say plus, now watch this. One dot you understand. The left fellow is the function, the right fellow is the argument, apply the function to the argument. Sure enough, it's working. So, we are, oh, let me tell you facts that dot is the highest priority operator there is in the system. Uh, I can say that all the functions that we have been using, built in functions, are all defined in a, what's known as a prelude file uh, in the language that we are studying. Gopher language is a kind of a high scale language. But dot is hardwired into the interpreter. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the highest priority operator. It's going to work left to right, uh, left associative. And uh, so plus is applied to 10 and something is applied to 3. So what happens when plus is applied to 3? Oh, it's a function from int to int. Right? Let me say this f applied to 3, where f is some function from e to int. Hmm? Okay. Now, the, what shall I say, the funda is that technically speaking, all functions of the lambda calculus are unary functions. So what if I have a binary function or ternary, quaternary, whatever, 3, 4, 5, whatever. One way out is to put a parenthesis around those arguments. Then we get a tuple of size 4 or 3 or whatever. Okay. So then the function is a unary function, domain is a set of tuples, and whose range is whatever it is you want. The other way is to supply the arguments with, so that the function consumes it one at a time. For instance, here, plus consume 10 and gave a function. That consumed 3 and gave you the result you wanted. If you had 4 arguments, basically you are going to get a set of sequence of 4 functions. The function on the left is going to consume one argument, it's going to give you a second function, that's going to consume an argument, that's going to give you a function and so on. Then the final function will consume the last argument and get the result you wanted in the first place. Okay. Uh, there is a big uh, theory behind it. We don't have the time to get into the theory. 
so let me show you there is a function built in function called filter hmm? what is the correct way to do it is what is the type of filter if i say filter is going to do the same thing okay filter takes the first argument is any type to bool the second argument is a list of those domain types of this right? and the result is another list of the same let let just let me just say filter okay. uh, let's say prime you want a list right? 1 to 100 okay. you will get a list of the same type as this list thing okay. here right? there is a function called take another function called drop right so uh, do you uh, look let's take a look at filter once again okay. when i communicate to you that one arrow is okay but when you have two arrows it's something that you are not accustomed to so i am trying to guide you pas margadarshan isi ko kehte hain ki mark pe main gaya to aapko dikha raha hu so filter is going to take a, what is known as a predicate hmm? and going to give you back a function let's just see filter apply to prime hmm? he says int to int that a became an int because prime is int to bool Hmm. So then, when you supply another list of things to this, let's just put it like this: f where f is filter applied to prime. Hmm. Now what? Something went wrong. Now f where f is this. Okay. So he says it's a function from int to int. Right. So let me supply a list of things. Right. Filter. Uh, f of two four dot 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 hundred. Right. Here f filter apply to. What do you think is the result going to be? there are no primes here right so when i say filter all the primes out of even numbers between 2 and 100 is going to say sorry there is no such integer hmm? and expected syntax error hmm? two is a prime nothing else is a prime hmm? So if I say let's see what happens three comma five all the way up to hundred. Oh, insert हो गया है ये भी keyboard is insert. Okay. He says all these odd numbers are prime numbers. Hmm? So I'm trying to convey that you didn't probably many of you didn't know that this language existed, that this notation existed, but already it's all in your head. We're just giving you a, a concrete uh, software which is doing all of the thing you know already. so you know functional programming already that is the point okay you just need to know how to think along the things that you already know so that you can use it for your i don't know what careers right uh, so uh, acha supposing i try to filter all the primes out of the even numbers it's going to crash as you saw so there is a function called take okay basically take some number out of a list okay just take the first few numbers out of a list let's see take 10 out
count off one dot dot dot. Mm -hmm. That's an infinite list. Mm -hmm. There's another function called drop. Mm -hmm. So let's just do this. Uh, take 10 out of drop 10 out of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if I wanted to look at the first 10 primes, mm -hmm. I would say take 10 out of filter primes out of mm -hmm. first 10 primes. Mm -hmm. okay. How about the second 10 primes? Take 10 out of, drop 10 out of, oops, and then lock. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. So these are all built in functions, and these built in functions have a pedigree of 30 years. Right? We just haven't been exposed to this, and uh, for reasons I don't understand, people aren't using functional programming anywhere in India. What I'm showing you is basic stuff. We could have easily done it in 11th and 12th. Right? But functional programming is treated as a difficult <laughs> subject. It is conceptually, you might say, subtle sometimes. Like maths is subtle. But it is not difficult. So if you study all your um, imperative programming like Java, this, that, the other, and then you do functional programming, you are not ready to apply the basics to all the things that you have already put into your brain. So as early as possible, get on with learning this stuff is my suggestion. Uh, while we are at it, let me show you different tricks, which tricks are notational tricks, that's all. So here we are, less than applied to 10, applied to 15, right? Uh, equality applied to 15. So less than applied to 10, would be, no, less than applied to 10. What do you think this is? The function from int to int. Uh, sorry, int to bool. Some numbers are less than 10, and some other numbers are not less than 10. Uh -huh. Nine is less than ten. Less than ten applied to nine. Eleven is not less than ten. Hmm? Now, how will you treat? Like we saw, what is plus? Plus applied to ten. Hmm? S of no, we did this. Hmm? S of hundred. Here, S was. We saw this, and sure enough, yeah, I yeah, have slightly new notation, but it's not earth shaking conceptually. Then the question is, I'm repeating what I said, what is the type of this? And the, some unresolved, we don't know exactly what operands are you going to supply, okay? But this is understood as, as long as A is a numeric type, the function is A to A to A. That means plus is a thing that grabs an A, produces a function, which grabs a second A, and gives you the result where A could be an internal float just now. 
So there is a numeric class. All those uh, types which belong to the numeric class, remember that A is a type variable. So those type variables have concrete types as their values. So num.a is the class containing intent float. Okay. Uh, Haskell might have complex. I don't think this one has complex. We don't need it for our study. Then the question is, what do you think is this? Okay. Any type in which there is an ordering, integers, floats, uh, characters, character strings, all of those. Okay. Uh, if you have a list, what do you think the ordering should be? We will discuss that later. We are coming too close to our lunch time. Like in the next five minutes, I have to stop. Okay. We, oh, I have to stop more or less immediately. Okay. Uh, so, how about this? One minus okay, applied to ten. Okay. Here. Okay. Clear enough, no? One minus the function one minus applied to ten. Okay. Now so this doesn't make sense. Minus one applied to ten. He'll say it's nonsense what I'm saying. Okay. He treats minus one in parentheses. And minus one. Hmm. Now the, I'm I'm no, I should have tried this before I came up. Plus one is coming to int. Hmm. So hey, what's this? We know minus one is minus one, and uh, he's behaving like that. But plus one is one. No, not the way this fellow is behaving. Okay. So plus one applied to ten is eleven. Mm -hmm. Now, one plus and one minus are going to be just right. Mm -hmm. One plus applied to ten, one minus applied to ten. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Uh, I think I'm going to say a few things. I'm going to get your head's permission to suggest to all of you, in class and online, if you want to follow through on this subject, here is a method, here is a way. Once we give the way to you and the method to you, it is not just my responsibility, it's the head's responsibility also to do whatever it takes to deliver the end result to you. I mean, if you don't want to study or you want to study a little bit, fine. But if you want to study quite seriously, let's say seriously, that's mm -hmm. Then, we cannot be seen to be stepping backwards. Uh, not a good thing. So tomorrow I'll discuss this. Tomorrow I'll get ready with list. So there's one operator I want to show you. Uh, tantalizing, you know, like in this Dharavaiks, you show just a little bit about the next one. So you know what this means. Okay. So I'll show you an operator, it's known as cons. Okay. Uh, one cons the verb with no like zero cons with one dot 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 ten. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Ah ha ha, sorry, sorry, sorry. We write like this, double colon, okay. So, the inverse functions are called head and tail, okay. Head now is 0 cons with 1 to 10 the same as 0 dot 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 10. What do you think is the answer to this? True or false? Then, uh, what is the, uh, 
Okay, now I'll end with one lovely piece of pickle. You can taste it till tomorrow, which is like you saw n plus one pattern. I want to I want to show you x cons excess pattern. X cons excess where no x where x cons excess is one zero. To ten, excess. Okay. Now the informal English language semantics is x is one element, excess is many elements. So head is always one, the first one in a list. The remaining are the tail, right? Uh, Lists are a downright workhorse of functional programming, as they are indeed of languages like Python. Okay. Tuples are much more restricted. You, in Python, they said that tuples are immutable and lists are mutable. In this kind of thing, everything is immutable, but the kind of uh, things you can do with tuples are limited compared to what you can do with lists. So tomorrow we'll have a session on lists, and after that we will actually head of department will come here and say a few words, one sentence, two sentence. Then we will do it that way. Otherwise, I'll carry a message. Onkar can deliver a message for from head. He has other things to do. There's a convocation <laughs> coming up tomorrow. Huh? So we'll stop here, and please you are invited to come. And if you are in touch with some online students, tell them to come. Huh? Will people come? More people come on Sunday than by Sakrishni. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, see you later.